Hello, this is Takshun from Walter Talk. Uh, I'm speaking to you uh, at the river this afternoon. I came down here after dinner and I really enjoy uh, the peacefulness right down in the river. And this is very quiet. As you can tell, it's a beautiful day and the, the temperature is right around the low uh, 80s, high 70s. I could not tell you how much nature provides me the peace of mind and appreciation of my life experience and my desire to make the world a better place. I have always looked for a quiet place surrounded by nature to reflect and to think. And you could not find it any better than this. So um, I hope you uh, enjoy the, uh, seeing the river as much as I enjoy being down here. Okay, so let's get to today's video. If you love salmon and you were never able to cook it exactly the way how you like it, uh, then this video is for you. Uh, my wife loves salmon, but I don't cook salmon too often. It is until recently uh, I am able to cook salmon exactly the way how we like it. Uh, one of the greatest challenge in cooking salmon is that you can either overcook it or undercook it. Uh, there are normally three ways to cook salmon. Uh, you can either grill the salmon, you can put it in the oven and bake it, or you can pan fry the salmon uh, in a skillet. And there's one problem with all of this free method in cooking salmon is you can overcook part of the salmon and undercook the other parts of the salmon. Because there are variations in the thickness of the flesh uh, in a piece of salmon. Some part of the salmon, such as in the middle, is thicker, whereas at the end is thinner. So if the end portion of the salmon is done, the center portion of the salmon will not be quite done yet. If the center part of the salmon is properly cooked, then the end portion will be overcooked. Therefore, cooking the entire piece of salmon in the exact doneness is quite a challenge. In fact, it is almost impossible. Also, there are three common methods to cook salmon uh, on the grill, in the oven, or in a frying pan. All of these three methods, when it is properly executed, uh, can produce excellent salmon. However, they do take on different characteristics. Uh, grilling the salmon is great because it causes charring on the surface of the salmon, uh, particularly the skin of the salmon. Uh, during the grilling process, it literally fry the skin because of oil underneath the skin and produce a great char flavor. However, there has a tendency to overcook the salmon. Uh, baking the salmon probably provides better control uh, in terms of the texture of the flesh. However, the skin uh, will not be cooked and they tend to be oily and it's not pleasant to eat. A pan frying the salmon is probably a compromise uh, between the grill and the baked salmon. Uh, it can result in a crispy skin uh, without overcooking the salmon in the case of grilling. Uh, however, all this free method takes time. Uh, usually, if you cook a one pound piece of salmon, it will usually take about 15 to 20 minutes. Uh, so I set out a goal uh, to create a method uh, that will provide the best texture of both the skin as well as the flesh of the salmon and it is also evenly cooked across the entire piece of salmon. And I would also like to cook a one pound piece of salmon in less than 10 minutes. After working on this problem for about several months, I come up with this method which in my situation, I believe to be the best method for cooking salmon. Uh, the basic idea of this method actually is very simple. Uh, first of all, is that you cut the salmon up into small pieces. You have some that are thicker and some that are thinner, but they are all even in their thickness. Uh, this will allow you to control the cook time of individual salmon pieces. Also, because now the salmon in smaller pieces, they cook much faster. And by pan frying them in the wok, 
uh, I'm able to uh, cook the skin of the salmon to exact texture that I like it. I can also char the skin of the salmon as you would do in grilling, uh, give them a crispy texture and delicious flavor. And for best flavor, use fresh salmon that has never been frozen. And in my opinion, the best way to cook salmon uh, is use it as a condiment rather than as the main ingredients in a dish. And in this case, one pound of salmon uh, could be divided into two separate meals. And for this one pound piece of salmon, I slide it in half. And in order to cut through the skins of the salmon, uh, you should have a pretty sharp knife. I find that either a sharp steel knife or a ceramic knife work very well. And when you cut the salmon into pieces, you want to cut it small enough that it will cook quickly, but you don't want to cut it too small that it affects the flavor of the salmon. As some people like it in different sizes, and you probably can experiment with the size to find the one that you preferred. Uh, cutting through the salmon skin uh, could be challenging. Uh, you can use a sawing motion uh, to slice through the skin. Okay, now we are all ready and set to go. Uh, let's get into the kitchen and I show you how I cook them. Uh, let's start the cooking by adding two tablespoons of uh, canola oil uh, after the wok has been heated up for about uh, 40 seconds. Uh, this salmon dish will be cooked in my Cucina 14-inch stainless steel wok, uh, which is my everyday wok. I like this wok for numerous reasons, and you can take a look at this video uh, and get some idea why this wok is my preferred everyday wok. Uh, by using a method that I call spot seasoning, uh, I season the wok each time before I cook uh, to create a non-stick cook surface. Uh, this method is very simple. All it takes is about an extra 15 to 30 seconds. It is a great insurance policy to ensure that your wok has a non-stick cook surface. Uh, basically, the wok is being seasoned by heating the cooking oil up to their smoking temperature. Uh, depend on the heating power of your stove, it usually takes about one to two minutes uh, to have the oil reach that temperature. I then turn down the heat and let the oil to smoke for about 15 to 20 seconds. And this is time when the wok being seasoned. And without taking any extra steps, you are now ready to cook. Uh, for this demonstration, I'm going to cook 8 ounces of salmon, uh, which is just about the right amount for my wife and I. Uh, to be able to precisely placing the salmon exactly how I like it, uh, I use a pair of long handle tongs. In order to create the texture of the skin that I want, I place the salmon skin down first. As the way how the salmon usually comes, uh, you have some part of the salmon is thinner and some part of it is thicker. So I cut the pieces into thick pieces and thin pieces. For this dish, I season the salmon with some rosemary right on top of it. In this particular dish, I'm going to cook the salmon all by itself. When I cook the salmon with other vegetables, I will not season it with rosemary. And you can season your salmon in any way that you want. Uh, you're only limited by your imagination. But to me, the most important consideration I have when I seasoning salmon is that I want to preserve the natural flavor of the salmon as much as possible. I'm going to let the salmon to fry for about 30 to 45 seconds without disturbing them. The wok can get really hot. I turn the heat down, which I use a flat glass top electric stove, to about medium low. By now, I'm going to use my tongue to turn the salmon over to check how they are going. If you try to turn the salmon, 
and it still stuck to the bottom of the wall. Uh, don't force it. Uh, this means that they are not quite ready uh, to be moved yet. If you try to move them too early, they will tear the skin apart. Uh, so in this case, patience is the virtue. Uh, when the skin is properly fried, it seals the skin and it allows them to be moved easily across the surface of the walk. The skin of the salmon is in its perfect texture and flavor when you turn them over uh, they look charred. Uh, when you look at the bottom of the wok at this point, you notice that it actually has more oil uh, because the frying drives the oil out of the salmon skin. And now the skin takes on the same texture as if the salmon has been grilled. Uh, the thin section of the salmon is going to fry faster than the thicker section. Uh, for the thin section, I simply turn it over to fry the other side. Uh, for the thick section, I just simply lay them on their sides. Now, this is the advantage of frying the salmon in pieces because now I can remove the thin section uh, because they cook much faster. Uh, this will allow me to cook individual pieces to exactly the same level of doneness that I want. In this case, you can treat each individual pieces of salmon separately and able to control their doneness. By using this method, you will guarantee have the perfect salmon. Uh, furthermore, by cooking the salmon in small pieces, it also saves time. The end result, you have perfectly cooked salmon that also take you less time. A truly win-win situation. As I have mentioned earlier, we use salmon mainly as a condiment. So in future video, I will show you how to cook salmon with other vegetables. And this video is another example of how to make home cooking that is practical, efficient, and creative uh, as part of your daily cooking routines. I post a video each day to demonstrate my fast cooking system. If you'd like to learn more about this cooking system, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. So keep on cooking. I will see you tomorrow.